Back in 2010, I was working as a server in a restaurant off of Melrose Avenue in Hollywood. And I was just finishing up the, my evening. I was um, standing at the bar rolling napkins watching the evening news and I saw a scroll that sort of went across the bottom of the TV that read, LGBTQ youth takes own life. And when I read that, at first I felt disheartened and then I felt relatively enraged angry, frustrated. I grew up in a small Christian conservative town um, called Elgin, Texas, where it was uh, Friday Night Lights, church on Sunday, gender norms were king, and I did not fit that mold. In fact, um, in the third grade, when I thought I had a sexy sibilant S, others would uh, call me a sissy. And that would be the label that I would, would carry until the sixth grade when Julius backed me against the lockers and slapped my face repeatedly, calling me a faggot and saying, say it, you're a faggot, admit it. Standing there, spit on my face, cheek tingling. I thought this was my lot in life. Maybe I should just accept it. Maybe I am all these terrible things that they're saying about me. And I carried this with me all the way up into the 12th grade when three of my classmates tried to electrocute me in my car. So I knew all too well what was going on in the minds of those youth. You see, back in 2010, it wasn't just one, it was eight. It was almost one after the other after the other who kept taking their own lives because of the consequences of bullying. My frustration, my anger, I felt like there was no adults in the room. And it was a call to action that I heard and hadn't heard before. So I went back to school. I got my master's in clinical psychology and specialization in LGBT studies. I became a licensed psychotherapist so I could go into schools and empower youth that were experiencing very similar broken systems that I did. <clears throat> and after working in schools and some of those systems, I started to see similarities with what was going on in the educational system and in, and in the corporate, corporate America, in business. It's the same climates just different ages. And so now as a diversity and inclusion practitioner, I work with leaders, particularly in helping them stand up inclusion initiatives. And I really want them to focus on three things. I ask them to first get comfortable with the language of LGBTQ, get comfortable with that acronym, and don't just stop there. I want you to actually say the words lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, ally. And I want you to unpack and unpack their history and understand that terminology so that you can validate their existence and acknowledge the individuals like myself who are contributing to your organizational performance. And then I want you to look at the rhythms and ways work gets done. I want you, want you to look, take a look at your practices and your processes and your procedures and see which ones are exclusionary and which ones are wrought with bias and work to mitigate those things. And lastly, and more importantly, I want you to examine your leadership paradigm. I want you to look at the leadership characteristics for which you think make your organization successful, and I want you to pivot on those. I want you to recognize that empowerment is critical to the success of one's sense of self. And if empowerment is not one of the characteristics in your leadership paradigm, that needs to change. And then I want you to take that leadership paradigm and those defined demonstrable traits and embed them into performance management so that you can start to hold leaders and managers accountable with clear expectations so that systems and structures like that, that, ex that, that youth experience in the education system and that get filtered all the way into corporate America can be mitigated, can start to lessen. In 2010, and certainly back when I was in grade school, I needed an empowering leader. I needed somebody to have my back. 
I'm asking all of you to go to your organizations and have the backs of your employees. Thank you.